Hey, it's Will from MomentumGroup.tech. I'm going to talk about how to build a notification system in Bubble. First up, understand what features you need. If you're building out an MVP, keep it really simple. A few send email actions or send SMS API calls are more than adequate. However, if you're building a bigger system, it's more than just you know a handful of emails or texts, then you really need to ask, how can you make this auditable? How can you make it scalable? We've built a number of these systems. And so these are the lessons we've learned uh, as a company. Create a data-driven system. Use the database to store elements of your system and to log elements of your system as well. So you can track what is going on. Put your content into templates. I'll show you that in a moment. Send multiple formats out from the single system. So if you have different channels, email, text, Slack, anything else, use one system. Avoid scheduling events into the future. So don't create a notification system where you um, schedule an API workflow for three weeks time to remind somebody of something. There's a massive design issue with this. The data that you're relying on might change. What happens if that person changes their subscription or changes their, um, they update something, then the notification will no longer be valid. Uh, it's also really hard to navigate a log, uh, a scheduler log with thousands of future notifications. Uh, and finally, organize your notification system in the back end. So these are some of the key design elements in the notification system that Momentum Group now uses on client projects. And this is a way that you can make sure your product will scale. In the database, we have a table of notification templates. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, so over here, I've got um, templates and I've got codes for them. I've got a name, the user role, a target, uh, which mode that they are on, email, SMS, in app, et cetera, et cetera. You can add these depending on your, your project. And inside these notification templates, you can actually uh, determine these things, which types of people they send to, and then you can create the actual text for different formats. Notification placeholders. Again, you're going to want to personalize these notifications, so you need to put in here some way of managing this. We create an option set for these things, and then we, we merge these, so we do a find and replace in our workflows. And of course, the notification itself. So when we create a notification, we create a data element for notification, and that is what we send out. Uh, and then we mark that as sent, and then we can see that that's been sent. Next, we have front end and back end workflows. So we actually have a workflow called create notification, and then we have to schedule that workflow to actually send that notification. So uh, in the back end, we have create notification, and then we just wherever we need to send this from front end or back end, then we schedule that. So how does that look? Uh, if we go here, this is in the back end, but I've got this create notification KN001. And what that does is it feeds in all the data that I need. Um, these are actually, this particular app, these are lists, but often they're single items. Uh, and so we send these in um, and then that will create the notification. Then on the back end, we'll have these workflows. So we'll have a create notification workflow. Okay, and this will run through a series of events that I'll explain now. Um, so the first thing is we copy all of the fields across from the notification template onto the notification. You know, like the email body, the email heading, the SMS body, the Slack body, whatever it might be. Second of all, we merge notification placeholders. So I'll find that workflow. Okay, it's actually a custom event. And we just go through and we just uh, do a find and replace. We find that, um, that option sets display and we replace it with the actual, um, the data element on the notification. So one thing we do when we create that notification is say the notification relates to a job, then we store the job data type on the notification and then we can reference the fields of the related data type within the notification. 
Uh, we set that up here. This way of doing it actually runs uh, sequentially and it runs very fast. So it's quite an efficient way of uh, working, even though it does look like there's a bit of duplication going on. Uh, Bubble doesn't really give us a loop functionality in this workflow, um, at least not the way that this has been set up. So although it looks a bit ugly, it is certainly very performant. Um, add the notification recipients. So again, we need to determine who are we going to send this to. Um, and we are an notification recipients. And this just depends uh, which mode you're sending by. Um, and some of these can go out by multiple modes, email and SMS, for example. And then we send the notification. So we send that via the various channels that we um, that we need. The last thing I want to mention is a recurring task scheduler. So if you need to send notifications around a data element, like let's just say it's an appointment reminder system and you need to send a reminder 15 minutes before the appointment, then you need some way of doing that. Um, there's a number of ways you can do it, but we don't really like the option of scheduling that event before the appointment because what happens if the appointment changes, then you have to cancel the event, create it again. There's a little bit of a risk of error there. So rather than doing that, We'll have a Bolt um, scheduler that runs every 15 minutes or hour, whatever the app needs. <clears throat> and it will just do a search and it will say, okay, get me all of the jobs that need this notification. And then it will retrieve that list and then we'll create the notifications off that. So that's a way of making sure that the data is always synchronized and we're not uh, filling up our task scheduler with loads and loads of future notifications, which is difficult to debug. So the benefits of, of approaching a design like this is that you can build a notification system which is scalable, maintainable, testable, and reliable. So if anything does go wrong, you're not gonna be down in the logs for hours trying to figure it out. You can pick, you can figure it out straight away. You can see, um, you know, did the API call um, response, uh, was it successful? Did it save onto my notification for that particular mode? And yes, it did, awesome. Did the template, did the placeholders all merge properly? Um, who were the recipients, why, you know. So all of this um, is a great way of making sure that we can build a system that not only works, but it we can prove that it works, that we can test it, that we can debug it if there is ever an issue. And that that is really important. So um, yeah, we've built out um, probably at least five of these systems in, in this similar approach. And um, we've developed our approach every time. Now we have a very um stable model of how to do this so um yeah thanks for listening i hope this helps you to uh grow in your design of systems like this um if you do want to learn more about this and how to become a uh, professional developer using bubble or a person who can maintain and scale your own app then seriously consider checking out our academy program momentumgroup.tech academy thanks for listening